2022, the PTO really got out of the block, demonstrating what they are trying to achieve in terms of growth for the sport. The foundations are now laid. Contenders and prospects are being determined. Last year was one of the greatest years triathlon seen. We were spoiled for the number of quality races we had over the different distances. It's been absolutely epic and some of the most exciting racing we'll see as well. A stellar cast list made up with some of the biggest names in triathlon gathered in Ibiza for the first event of the PTO season and the chance to be crowned the PTO European Open champion. Big story of course, Jan, Ali, Christian, the last three Olympic champions racing for the first time together. There is such a buzz today, and I think this is the day that triathlon fans have been waiting for. We have three of the greatest athletes of all time in the same race, finally. As with all these things, expectations were high, and it certainly didn't disappoint. We are racing here for the first European Tour ever, the first race of the PTO Tour. There is a better swim standard here than maybe we've seen in the last few PTO Opens. We have Alistair Brownie, Jan Fredino. They really want to open up this swim. So out in front, that is Jan Fredino. You can see there, they're still quite close together. We don't feel like anyone has really stretched out this swim yet. They're coming out the water and we will see them dash into T1. Aaron Royal there in picture now. Yeah, the two-time Olympian. We'd expect him to be fast through transition. There we go, there's Max Newman as well. Jan Fredin is already heading out. That's going to have to be a fast transition there for Newman to get onto the back of this group. Alistair Brownlee heading well. out. You yeah, can you can the hear crowd. the cheers. We've got Kyle Smith heading out there as well. What have we got here? Got that transition there. A little... Oh yeah, Jan Fredin just struggling there with that jump onto his bike. See, oh, the no others way. have all run a little bit further up the hill and quite smoothly jumped on, but Jan jumped on at the bottom of the hill. You can see there the shake of the head. He's uh, not happy with himself. So Alistair Brownlee leading the PTO European Tour race. Couple of seconds behind Smith, Royal, Frodino, and then Ben Knut. Just getting word that Magnus Dutlev, predictably, is the biggest mover. He's made 10 passes so far. I mean, he's blown by Florian Angert as well in the tunnel. Oh, yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable riding here from Magnus Ditlip. But Alistair Brownlee there looking uh, really smooth. And I think third lap, they'll know now Ditlip is on the back of the group. Christian Blumenfeld is at 30 seconds back, yeah. but in Position the group with Jan hands. Fredino. Now, I'm so excited about the women's race too. There is such a strong field today. So many of the top 10 are here. I think it's eight out of the top 10. One of the best fields assembled at this distance. And we are racing with the women as well. Analysts and fans have been celebrating this lineup as maybe the best ever. So many storylines, a lot to be excited about. It's got choppy out there. I just noticed that as Lucy Charles Barkley rounded that boy, you can see the waves out there. So that will suit some of the athletes. Back to the men, we've got Kyle Smith, Alistair Brownlee, Max Newman, and Magnus Ditlevs. They put a good amount of time into the chasers. It's the one certain in the women's race today is that Lucy's going to take out the swim hard. And here she is doing that. So we're going to take a look over at the men's race and it's Max Newman who is now leading out the men on the bike. And Lucy Charles Barkley, as expected, a signature swim from her as she looks to bring it back into T2. <laughs> Thank you. 
but now she's onto the bike and just doing what Lucy Charles Barkley does and that's really pushing the pace and those athletes behind are going to have to work very hard to get to her. T2 now for the men. This is going to be very interesting indeed. We're talking transition. Who gets it down the smoothest? This Ditlev just struggling a little bit with that shoe. Gone with no socks, interestingly. Some of them have socks on, some don't. Max Newman as well, just a little bit slower. And Frodeno and Blumenfeld running out together. <laughs> side by side out of how G2. It. Exactly what we wanted. Paula Finley, known for her strong bike. She's making moves. She's made up, I think it's over a minute now. So Fastest really, bike split. yeah, she's really moving well through the field. Lucy Charles Barkley and Ashley Gentle, one and two. I think there's about 144 between them. This is really promising from Alistair Brownlee. It's so far looking really good, is putting in time. He's, yeah, I think he's put in about 10 seconds into Frodeno and Blumenfeld already. There's Annie Haug on the bike. Great to get a shot of her. So she's currently in ninth, but she's had a really good ride. I'm just looking at some of the pacing as well. And it's 4.10 that Alistair Brownlee's running. Max Newman was for just over four minutes a kilometre. So he's really trying to make up that ground on Alistair Brownlee. But there's Christian Blumenfeld coming round. So he's managed to drop Jan Frodeno. I can't wait to see how this run plays out. It's just exciting to see these, these great runners in the field. The, the runners that were a threat, that gentle Annie Haug, they're moving forward, they're in the mix. Max Newman, he has taken the lead. Yeah, he's made the move. Max Newman's just put, really just picked up the pace. Christian Blumenfeld is on the chase, isn't he? He's got to make up that time to Max Newman. He's running out of time to do it, though. It looks like we have a new star in the making. Yeah, Max Newman's played this race really well. I think he's picked up the pace here. He's looking really strong at this finish. It's an outstanding run for Max Newman. I beat the rocks for Max Newman. A wonderful day out. Christian Blumenfeld turns the corner. He'll see the shoot now. Well, he's beaten Jan Fredino. He's beaten Alistair Brownlee. It's a fantastic race from him. Didn't quite have enough turf to make up the time on Max Newman. And there is our remaining podium placer, Magnus Ditlev, the great Dane is bringing that through. Fredino and Jason West, it's Fredino over the line first. Fourth great position. to have him back racing. Fourth position for him after 616 days away. That's it's been a privilege. So Lucy is in transition. She hasn't seen anyone the whole day. She's only would have seen the athletes on the turnarounds, but they've always been over a minute behind her. It's been a lonely ride. That's Paula Finley, Ashley Gentle. They're racking near each other, being kind of two of the top ranked athletes. Biggest challenges there to Lucy Charles Barkley, Ashley Gentle, just for coming off winning the last two PTO Opens. Annie Haug, she's going in in ninth position, but only two minutes down. Her runs have been devastating this year. And I believe that Annie Haug has run herself into third place. And there is Ashley Gentle, now behind Annie Haug. Yeah, Annie Haug's made the move really early on. She's moving really well, isn't she? Germany's Annie Haug marches forward into the lead. There she goes, and she does surge. Yeah, straight she went in front wide. and straight into second. Here we go. She makes that corner. It has been one of the most celebrated fields in women's triathlon. But Annie Haug has run through to win the PTO European Tour race here in Ibiza. What a run! It is second place for Ashley Gentle. Congratulations to her. 
And here's Lucy Charles Barkley to take third here in Ibiza. What an effort it's been from her today. Think USA, think big, think bold, think Broadway, think bright lights, think stars and stripes, think Hollywood, think the American dream. And this weekend, think of the dreams of some of the greatest triathletes in the world. It is lights, camera action on the PTO US Open. We are racing 100 kilometers of swim bike run here in Milwaukee. Christian Blumenfeld and Magnus Ditliv are in good positions, better than what we would have expected. Jan is behind for Christian Blumenfeld. They're going to have to really sprint to catch on to that front group. There might be a little bit of a pack forming right now. There's been a massive break here now. Aaron Royal's just done a bit of backstroke to look back. He's got seven people on him and there's a big gap back. So the surprise really is Christian Blumenfeld. Didn't expect him to be this far up the front. So again, a phenomenal swim from Christian. Jan is the last on this pack here. These few moments here are gonna be critical for Jan. And here we go, this is the second group out. Frederick Funk, it's Jason West. Uh, He'll definitely be featuring at some point Corey in the race, Angus. I'm sure. It's a perfect position for Christian Blumenfeld because he'll sit in and conserve his, his legs. There's been a big move on the course, Jack. Mathis Margiera, the most underrated male triathlete in the world. Look at him. Christian's not seeing him come past and being like, oh, he's going so fast, I can't hold him. He's letting that pass happen. He's sitting in and he's thinking, how good is this? Magnus is now only 30 seconds back on Christian and, and Matthias out the front. Magnus is going to catch them. This is what he does. He, he eases into the ride for 15 kilometres and then he just puts the hammer down. This is like one of the, the most fascinating race dynamics we've probably seen. Magnus, Christian and Matthias out the front of the race. Jan's dropped off. Jan's not going to get back there, I don't think. Still holding out top is Christian Blumenfeld. And I know it's early, but he's looking good for it. The pace is on and he means business. We have Sam Long coming into the top eight now. He's in 316 down, but right in front of him, Daniel Backagar, Josh Amberger, uh, Fred Funk is at 140 down. So uh, there'll be a lot of movement. And that's Jan Fredino actually still hanging on to Magnus. The GOAT, don't count him out just yet. The question is, how hard has Jan had to work and how is he feeling right now? Oh, oh no. Christian's oh. cramped. Not oh, again. No way. Canada all over again. This happened to Christian, the exact same quad. I sort of thought Christian had this race in, in the, the bag. bag. I sort of thought there's no way he hasn't won this. Suddenly this race is Jan's to lose. What we're going to see here, we're going to see Magnus look really smooth and run comfortably. And you're going to see like this gritty, hard running style of Matthias Margiera. Jan looks solid too. If Jan's moving to the front of a race like this, it means he's feeling good and it means he's fit. This is the race for Jan to go, I haven't beaten Christian, I'm going to do it today. We're seeing Christian Blumenfeld running up onto the heels of Magnus Ditliff. This is massive here. Christian Blumenfeld has come back. Oh, here we cramp. go again. Quad. Another cramp. No, oh, no, no it's just it. as he was yeah. about to make his move. Oh, so this is brutal. That so little surge he tried he to make is literally what's hurt him here. Yeah, he, it's almost like he has to just baby it or, 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 or keep the pace lower. This just wasn't in anywhere in his thoughts. He, yeah, he was so confident. Yarn here. Looks so good. I've heard stories like I've said about how well he's been running and we're seeing it here. Jason West is definitely running fastest on course. There's every chance he catches Christian here. Yeah, don't think of this as a surprise that Magnus isn't being able to hold on to Matthias. Matthias is a, a, is a world-class runner. Sam Long is running really well. Now in sixth, he is closing the gap on Fred Funk. Sam Long is having an insane race. 
Yeah. Magnus Ditliff is he's pulled lost. off to the side. Yeah, we saw that when he ran through transition two last time. He oh, looks like he's he was out hurting. of the race. Yep, he's done. Oh. Challenge Roth's come back to get him there. We just saw Jason West run past Christian and put in an insane surge. It would have been a 240 per K surge. Good and Lord. Christian didn't let it happen. He's, yeah, look, he went with it. This is Christian, he's, he's like, heels. I am not going to be off this podium. I will kill myself to be here. So hopefully he doesn't cramp here. But All eyes on Christian's left quad as we speak. How can someone look that good at this stage in this race? He's got a minute lead. He's got one lap to go. Oh, we can see uh, Matthias wow. is in screen here for for uh, Jason West and also Christian Blumenfeld. And this just shows how tough Christian Blumenfeld is. He was walking uh, um, a, a couple of laps ago. Um, and we we almost caught, is he is he going to even finish? But now he's back and he's battling for a second place finish. Here they go. Jason West into second. Matisse looks over and then he'll notice that Christian's with him as well. Jan Fredino now looked like he had the, the race won and Christian and, and Jason, they're catching him and they're catching him fast. Jan's now, in, he's entering this state of like euphoria of like, look at me, I'm the greatest of all time. Jan Fredino is coming down the blue carpet. What a moment it is for Jan Fredino, the Olympic champion, multi-time world champion. He is about to add the PTO US Open to his very long list of credentials. What a performance wow. and what a man. The greatest of all time, Jan Fredino is about to cross the line and win the US Open. Congratulations, that man. John, this is insane what he's just done today. And he knows it too. And look at the face of Jason West. The best performance of his career. He is really biting down, showing a clean pair of heels to Christian Blumenfeld. He is coming in second place. It is a massive prize for Jason West. The America wins here in Milwaukee. <laughs> How has he done that? Jason West just there has run the, that's the fastest run in PTO history. Look how much he had to hurt. 56, 23, he just won. Jan Fredino won that race, he ran 101. That is just insane by Jason West. And coming in in fourth, Matisse Margerier. It's been a world-class form and he has made an indelible mark on this race. Congratulations to him. Dad power from Sam Long here, John. <laughs> we can say that now. Yes, indeed, Sam Long. He was on, he was perhaps off. But of course, there's a big smile from Sam Long as he brings it home. Yesterday, we had it all. We had a high sun and we had still water and we had a clear run. And then we had the starter gun and all hell broke loose as underdogs barked, new dads grinned and the coming men went and the favorite blew and WestJet flew. And at the end, you just knew that the greatest, well, he is the greatest. So how about we do it all over again today? Ladies, it's over to you. We are racing. Lauren Brandon stretching out the women's field at the moment. And Hayley Chura with Taylor Nib side by side. What I would say about what's happening in the second lap of this swim here is it's, it's working out perfectly for Ashley Gentle. Taylor Nib leading that second group with Rebecca Clark has actually lost time. She's probably 25 to 30 seconds down on Lauren Brandon now. And the big development is the Ashley Gentle Paula Finlay group is actually only about 12 to 15 seconds down on Taylor. So Taylor has leaked a bit of time here leading that second chase group on the second lap. Everything's just so spread out. This race is going to be pretty chaotic on the bike after this swim. Well, here comes Lauren Brandon. So Ashley Gentle 
104 down on the lead, about 30 off of Nib as we see Lauren Brandon exiting T1. Taylor hasn't had her usual swim. Right. She'd normally be probably more 30 seconds up, which is where Lauren Brandon was. So Taylor Nib making quick work of that 30 seconds. This is still on the first out straight away, and they do have seven laps of this bike course. We did expect pre-race that Taylor would have a bigger gap at this point than she does. So that working group with Paula, Ashley, is working really well. Ellie Salthouse on, on camera here, she's, she's sort of trying to take overtake Ash while Paula Finlay is overtaking both of them. So this is going to be sort of a tricky dynamic for these women here. And as we're seeing here at the front of the race, Taylor and that chase group, their gaps actually stayed exactly the same. Yeah, as you see now, it's it's a group of sort of five, six, seven women riding together, which sort of tells me that maybe the pace isn't as hot as we thought it, it would be from uh, from Paula Finlay. Lucy Byron looks like she's going to go straight to the front and go right around both Paula and India and, uh, and set a new tempo at the front of this chase group. Taylor will, I think, need another minute at least. I think she would want, you know, four plus minutes off the bike on Ashley Gentle. Lucy Byram coming into this group is actually a really good thing for this chase group because she's put 10 seconds into Taylor Nib over that last little patch since she went to the front. So the actual the group has gone from about 2.15 behind to now only two minutes behind since Lucy Byram went to the front. That's actually massive. Kat Matthews has broken into the top 10 now. She's around 5.17, 5.18 down from the lead. So Kat Matthews a factor in this race because she is one of the r fastest runners. Uh, but these last couple of laps, I, I think she will push really hard to try and extend that gap to as much as possible. The predicted gap is just over three minutes now. Leading into this with Taylor entering T2 here, we probably expected her to have maybe even triple the lead that she has now. And I think maybe even Taylor expected that. Lucy Byron, very strong cy cycle leg for her. I believe second fastest cycle leg on the day. Paula Finlay hopping off now. The clock starts here really when uh, Ashley Gentle hops off the bike. And we'll see what this split is, but only 90 seconds from Taylor Nib to Lucy Byron. So it's uh, 2.48 from Ash Gentle to Taylor Nib. Wow, yeah, that's uh, much less, obviously, than we've, <laughs> we thought. Ellie Salthouse cramping. Oh, no. Different quad to Christian Blumenfeld yeah, yesterday. The right, the right quad, too. <laughs> but exactly the same position. <laughs> to my eye, Taylor Nib looks to be running really well. Taylor Nib is a world-class runner. She's one of the best middle-distance runners in the sport. So we saw Taylor, she is the hunted. There is Ashley Gentle, she is definitely the hunter. It went down at the US Open last year. It is back on again. Can Ashley Gentle make up the ground and go into a foot race with Taylor Lib? Kat Matthews in ninth place, only about five minutes and 40 seconds down from Taylor Nib here is someone who I think we can really expect to move through the field and, and see her rise up into the top five. We see Ashley Gentle has moved into second place. She is stepping on the gas. She's doing what we know she can do. Ashley Gentle needs to be making up about 32 seconds a lap, and she made up 32 and I think 27 in the last two laps. So um, she's, she's right there. It's going to be a close race. Holly Lawrence has passed Ellie Salthouse, and that will be for fifth position. Lucy Byron, a bit of a slow um, little patch out of T2, but does actually look to be running really well, like surprisingly well. Taylor Nib is running basically the same pace as Ashley Gentle, only about one or two seconds per kilometre slower. I mean, I don't think anyone expected to see that fight back. Surely there's going to be some emotion from Taylor Nib now, the current number six in the world. She was second at the US Open in 2022. She has brought it home. The American on home soil is the winner of the US Open here in Milwaukee. It is a fantastic and excellent A-star performance from Taylor Nib. What an athlete. She is often the one to beat. She is coming home in second place. Outstanding performance again from Ashley Gentle. Great rivalry there between those two athletes.
And here is Canada's Paula Finley. She has raced her way to third here at the PTO US Open. Congratulations, Paula Findlay. A big smile that she crosses the line. You can see Lucy Byram is hurting here. That's because she's running scared because just around the corner there, you can see both uh, Holly Lawrence and Ali Soldhouse. And they, that is quite a close gap for this level of um, of race and, and this distance of race you can see these so this is the kind of battle that you love to see where holly lawrence is absolutely giving it to herself so is ali salthouse and so is lucy byram this this sprint finish here after 18 k's this is just it just brutal and you can see it on holly lawrence's face and here is lucy byram what a future she has in the sport and she comes in fourth with this strength of field as well and look who she's beaten jack bring these ladies home for us Holly Lawrence here is absolutely giving it to herself because it never feels like it's over at this point. You literally go through the line. That's why we've seen Lucy Byron collapse. That's why we've seen Holly Lawrence collapse. I wouldn't be shocked if Ali Soltaus, yep, there she goes. She's on the deck as well. That kind of sprint finish after 17 and a half K and three and a half hours of racing at this level. It just, it's no wonder that all three of them hit the deck straight away. Uh, that's what makes this sport so much better than other sports. It's, um, it's, it's just human, human performance to the absolute limit this sport. You know, look at this, look at the look at the depths these girls have Good to go to. Lord. Maximum effort from these women today in, in a very strong field with some brilliant individual performances. So here we go once again, with a new weekend on a new continent, in a new country, with new rivalries to ignite and new champions to crown. Take a breath and recognise that it is the pictures that need to do the talking, as we say welcome to the PTO's newest playground of the gods. We are racing in the Lion City, 100 kilometers of top swim bike run here in Singapore for the PTO Asia Open. We see Sara Perisana take the lead with that short sprint. And now Lucy Charles Barkley becomes the chaser. So in they go into T1, Jack, and for once Lucy Charles Barkley has a bit of company. She's not gonna be solo as they get on the bike. Yeah, I actually think this is a great swim for Ashley Gentle. Ellie Salthouse, she's typically towards the front of the field. Again, this is a good little power group. So we've got shots of Annie Haug here, John, and she really does look very isolated. Her race is now interesting because she's going to have to try and work through the field. The bike course suits her because it's a bike course that suits climbers. We've never had, a, a, I don't think from my memory, we've ever had a course in triathlon in a, in a race to this scale. As we see on the screen here, Ashley now has a visual on the two litre. She has bridged across that gap. Now we're seeing that only after, you know, 30K on this ride, Ashley's already caught Lucy Charles Barclay, showing that the conditions, the course, and the current wow. form are Look so different. Look at the way she's going past them here. And in the TT bars too, Crowey, not sitting up climbing. Imogen Simmons here, yeah, still riding very well and riding solo, um, holding pace, not losing any time to the women in front and this is a great race for Imogen. They'll get to eyeball each other, they'll see the gaps forming on the course so they know exactly where they are in relation to their main competition. Still looking strong out of the saddle now. Both these women are just world-class professionals and I don't think anything of what they're seeing here is shocking to either of them. Arnie Haag right here, mechanical. Chloe, so something's happening with her rear cassette, it looks like something's stuck between her rear cassette, it's wrapped around her wheel between her oh, rear cassette. Up a, come on in, let's go. It's in. now over a minute and 15 seconds, Crowey too. I hate to say it because I feel equally as bad for Annie Haug there, but that could be the most decisive moment of this race for Ashley Gentle too. Imogen Simmons here wow. in second place. What, what a bike ride from Imogen. Chelsea with a storming run through the field here. 
Chelsea Sodaro is running exactly the same as Ashley Gentle and Arnie Harv. Having a look here at Ashley Gentle running through a really crowded part of the course, giving a smile, giving a fist pump. That's great. Annie Haug has closed in on Lucy Charles Barkley and she makes her pass. Chelsea Sodaro is stretching out up the hill. She's taken Imogen Simmons. She's running in third right now. She doesn't look like being caught by anyone. Ashley Gentle, she's counting down the steps as she gets down the blue chute. She takes the high fives off of the crowd here in Singapore. Ashley Gentle is back on top. She wins the PTO Tour Singapore. What a fantastic performance by Ashley Gentle to close out her 2023 campaign. The second spot on the podium here in Singapore, right over the line with a big smile on her face. Brilliant, excellent work by Annie Haug. She gave a little shrug of the shoulders there, John, which to me, I interpreted that as what could have been. She only finished two minutes and 15 seconds down on Ashley Gentle. She always rises to the challenge. She loves racing the big fields. She's gone up against the very best today and she will run across the line in third place. Congratulations, Chelsea Sodaro. She probably proved a lot to herself today, John. Look at Y'all must have forgot, right? Tears straight away to me, which shows pressure, it shows relief. And what a performance by Imogen Simmons. Not just a, a great performance, I think that's the best performance of Imogen Simmons' career. the final PTO race of the season. And for the athletes, it's a last chance to write a headline for themselves, the last chance to bank $100,000, and the last chance to wear the crown of Open Champion. Singapore translates as the Lion City, and that is about right today, with some of triathlon's biggest cats hungry, prowling, and determined to finish as King of the Pride. We are racing in Singapore. 100 kilometers of top swim bike run here for the PTO Asian Open. As we see now, Josh first up. Doesn't seem to be in too much of a hurry. It looks like he wants someone else to, to get in front and take, take the lead. They are still compressed together, pretty much as one pack. There's some blokes who are there that have never been there before, so their race like strategy and, and tactics suddenly change. So those top guys might have a bit of a shock seeing how many people are in the front group here. There you saw Aaron actually turning around. You could see him looking back and yeah, he's probably quite surprised that there's nearly the whole field in that front group. Oh, As we see. Pictures here, Sam Laidlow in transition. Came into this ill health. Oh, oh as no. we Gosh. see. Uh, is that Gustav? Gustav. Oh, is. Oh. 2023 has just been such a tough year for him and you sort of hate to see this. It's actually quite heartbreaking. This is what you dream of as an athlete having one of these days and I think every athlete likes to have more than one or two strings to their bow and he's showing us he's definitely got more to his. What's happened here with Aaron Royal? Chain stuff? It looks like it's cost him 30 seconds there so that's Tom Bishop there that we just saw on the side of the road. <laughs> the PTO US Open, he had a mechanical at almost the same point of the race and he's had it again here. And this here that we're seeing is Mike Phillips. So that's three mechanicals we've seen in the last sort of 5K of the race. This is chaos. It's man. heartbreaking for the athletes. It's a long way to come. Christian, he's all business at the moment. He's in a great position, 28 seconds back. Well, I, I love the story so far. And I'm excited to see how it will unfold going forward as well, 33 year old. Peter Hemerick having a great day here in the blistering heat of Singapore. At this point, I don't think it's a race winning lead for Peter Hemerick by any stretch. Peter Hemerick still looks amazing though. To me, he looks great. He looks fast, he looks fluent. Christian Blumenfeld is only 40 seconds behind now. He is closing that gap quite quickly now. I think we're going to get very used to seeing the purple sectors in Jason's West, West name on the run here, John and Crowey. He is, um, like he always is in, in a PTO race, he's having an exceptional run. Here we're seeing the catch about to happen, Crowey. Christian Blumenfeld running noticeably faster down that hill to Peter Heimrich. 
that catch between Christian Blumenfeld and Peter Hemrick is about to happen. There it is. We have a new leader here in Singapore. So now we've got to keep our eyes on Peter Hemrick. Will he be able to maintain his pace or will he blow up? If he blows up, Jason West can catch him. Well, he sees the blue now and he's coming down towards the finish line. His resume is quite something and it's about to get even deeper. This man is rewriting the triathlon playbook. He can quite literally do it all. Christian Blumenfeld is the PTO Tour Asian champion 2023. He's done it. He's pocketed himself a PTO Tour race and he's done it in quite some fashion. And what a race for Peter Hemerick. He sprints his way across the finish line. He comes home second at the PTO Asian Tour. What a remarkable performance <laughs> as he jumps into the ice bath. Career day for Peter Heimrich. Like John, John, John. Dennis Chevro is about to make the pass on Sam Long. Good we Lord. didn't even think he was in this battle. We knew he was like closing time, but we didn't think it was quite that much time. He's just done it. And there is Jason West crossing the line. He makes up our podium here in Singapore. And there is Dennis Chevro coming in, the flying Frenchman, bringing this one home with a beautiful run. He looks like he's given it everything, John. I, I mean, that's what happens when you have to work your way through these elite fields. To run yourself up into fourth like that, you actually have to give it everything and absolutely destroy yourself. So collapsing at the finish line, no surprise. And Sam Long, who we just hear scream out of... Sheer out of, exhaustion. 